Hey folks, everything new under the sun. I want to give you a little Solar Assistant quick tour uh, of uh, the interface. Uh, this happens to be on my iPad, iOS, obviously. This is just a web page though, so you can access it pretty much on anything that uh, connects to the web. This is connected to my Signature Solar EG4 3 kilo kilowatt uh, solar charge controller all-in-one controller, and uh, that all-in-one controller is connected to an EG4 LL uh, 100 amp hour uh, battery, which uh, basically that system is my off-grid system, and so I monitor it with this to see what's happening. Now, this is a super useful uh, thing. This runs off a of Raspberry Pi 4. Uh, it uh, consumes, uh, I think, uh, I think it's uh, was it 15 or, or 20 watts. Uh, now I may be wrong there. I'll have to check that. But anyways, it, it's a a fairly low consuming um, uh, device. Um, I think it's actually 6 watts. Um, anyways, uh, you, you can check that out for yourself. But it's fairly low consuming. And uh, so you can see uh, this is the heads up. This is the dashboard. We've got the solar uh, PV input on um, the right side there. You can see that I brought in 6.9 kilowatt hours uh, today. And that happens to be uh, about a 2500 kilowatt hour solar array there, um, plus or minus. I have a, kind of an offset, uh, two, two different arrays offset. You can see the battery uh, percentage there. Um, you can see that it is connected to the grid. Now that's not grid tie, that's not sending power to the grid, that's pulling power from the grid if the solar power uh, isn't there. And then the inverter is in solar battery mode right now. At night time it switches over to grid mode when the battery uh, isn't enough to sustain the system. So the next bit here is we have uh, the charts of the incoming solar on the right hand side, 158 watts. It is about uh, 4 o'clock p.m. in the afternoon on the east coast uh, Canada and uh, it is uh, November 4th um, so the Sun goes down fairly quick and so it's getting dark already um, but at max it'll it'll max at around uh, 2,000 uh, watts which you can see in the first overview graph here so the yellow that you can see of course is um, the Sun uh, and it peaks just under uh, 2 kilowatts and then the red there you can see charging the batteries the grid power so when um, before basically the the battery runs out you can see uh, at the very bottom there of the screen, you can see the, um, the battery is kind of uh, uh, goes up to about 60, 65 percent, uh, and then it shuts off the grid. You can see on the red there, uh, and then it starts consuming the the battery power. So very nice. This is all kind of on the first screen here. Let's go over to uh, the charts. Now this is all local network stuff. It does store all the data on the Raspberry Pi itself. Um, you can access it off your network, of course. Uh, but the nice thing is that it's not going to some uh, warehouse uh, server on Amazon or, or in China or somewhere like that. You hold the data. Uh, it's on uh, your memory card. So here are the charts again. Overview, battery power, state of charge. You can see the battery um, being used during the day and uh, heading down at night. Here is the PV voltage. You can see that big, um, um, where it bottoms out, that's basically nighttime. When the sun goes away, comes back in the morning, and, and the solar PV voltage comes back up. And uh, and then you can see the, the PV current again there. On the right-hand side, basically the current goes up through the middle of the day and then comes back down. Now the, the jaggedy edge, of course, is where the sun isn't shining or the cloud goes by or something, so that's what you see there. Pretty handy. It's got battery temperature, inverter temperature, which are not registering because I don't have that plugged in. Um, and it also shows the AC voltage, which is kind of nice. You can see it uh, oscillate up there uh, around 120 volts when there's big lag draws on it or otherwise. That's handy to know uh, what the frequency of uh, your AC is. And you can see the load power there. So let's go over to, to charts. This is the long-term uh, chart tab. Um, this is kind of handy, and I've only had uh, this system up for about 90 days. Uh, but you can see how many kilowatt hours uh, we're going uh, over per day, generally speaking. Um, again, here's the last 30 days, which you can download to, you know, Excel or whatever if you want. Now, note uh, on October 31st and, and uh, prior to that, you can see the kilowatt hours in the 300, 600, 900 range. That was actually a bug that Solar Assistant, the, the company, actually fixed. Um, but you can read, uh, you know, from left to right, you got the load, 5.6 kilowatt hours. The, uh, brought in about 6.9 kilowatt hours of uh, solar. And the battery charged up, used about 6.1, and and of the grid, you know, when the solar wasn't sufficient uh, before or after, during the night that day, uh, it pulled about 3.5 kilowatt hours from uh, the grid that day. So overall, uh, pretty good. Here's a 52-a-week chart, and so, of course, I haven't had it up that many months, but uh, maybe I'll do another review after, after a year. 
and here's the last 12 months as it uh, accumulates data. I go over to uh, the power management. Now this is something that the EG4 from Signature Solar does not support yet. Um, or that solar system doesn't support with the EG4 rather. Um, some other inverters um, uh, do uh, support uh, this functionality and it, it allows you to tweak some power settings on the inverter. Going over to the setup tab, um, going over, over to the setup tab here, you can see the model for the EG4 that you need to connect to is the summary SUMRY and then when you plug in uh, the USB to your um, uh, charge controller, your EG4, you'll see that UART, USB UART uh, item there and, uh, and, and below it is the battery. Now again I don't have a direct connection to the battery so it just uh, uses the inverter values and that's totally fine for what I do. At the bottom there then you got your language and your date and your temperature and all that good stuff. Right now mine's using internet time because the internet's connected but you can uh, set that manually if you want. Um, you can view detail on the USB. If you're having trouble with USB, you click the view detail link there. And, um, and then you can clear your, uh, your SD card if you want. Um, and what ships with this one is a 32 gig uh, SD card, which is, which is nice. And I happen to be in the beta um, uh, lane for software releases. Um, there are some bugs with it, but that's why mine says uh, 1030. Uh, with it being uh, November 4th, and that's because I have the very latest where that bug was fixed. So there you go. The MQTT broker, I think that's for uh, automating some uh, settings on some uh, um, uh, controllers. I don't think that's specific to the EG4 from Signature Solar, um, but that's all I have uh, configured. So that's all I wanted to uh, relay to everybody. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, it's a great little tool, especially uh, if you want to carry it in your pocket in your, on your cell phone to, to monitor what's going on or if you're away from the house, you can gauge it. And what I find most helpful is really these charts that show when is the grid coming on? When am I not uh, using solar when I should be? How is the battery doing? Uh, how fast are we charging? All that is uh, critical information to have up front. And really this page um, shows it all for you. So thanks for watching, folks. We'll see you in the next video.